Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. There are times that the Spirit of God will come upon you and you don't realize exactly why that is happening. There have been many times in meetings, whew, my, hmm, when the Spirit of God would come on me, and it's a powerful thing, and you must think that it's happening to equip you to help you, to bring you to a place that God has planned for your life. It's like, to me right now, it's like a, a great weeping on the inside. And see, I don't understand that. I know that when the anointing to weep comes upon you, you're weeping for salvation. You remember when Jesus came to Jerusalem and he prayed, to, Oh, Jerusalem, oh, Jerusalem. How he would have taken them under his wing. He was praying for their salvation. He was hoping for their salvation. And there have been times, even in this church, that the spirit of weeping, my, 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 has come upon me in, in such a manner that I had to leave the sanctuary and go elsewhere and two times that I remember when I came back in, somebody got saved two different times in, in the service. Why am I saying this? I don't know. Maybe somebody in here is, is dealing with this. Weeping comes upon you. You just want to weep. If that happens to you, allow it to happen. You can weep in the realm of the Spirit like you have never wept in your life. But give yourself to the Spirit of God and just believe that God has used you in that manner to get somebody saved. You know, There's an awesomeness about God that it's not always spoken about, like weeping in the Spirit, for instance. He has a plan, and He knows exactly how it works. If we'll just, just do what He wants us to do. I think I'm supposed to tell you that because I was released right then. It's a heavy thing on you when, when God uh, uh, wants you to do something like that. You know, weep for the lost. And it's an awesome thing. It's an awesome experience. Praise God. That had absolutely nothing to do with what I want to teach tonight. But I guess it had a lot to do with it. <laughs> it come out of the realm of spirit. Um, I want to talk about holiness. I want to talk about holiness in the new birth. Um, and I know I'm not going to get it finished tonight. So 
uh, if I'm invited to, to teach again, then I'll just hook up where I left off and, and finish. Praise God. Uh, our foundation scripture is going to be found in Ephesians. Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1, 3 through 14. Hmm. 1, no, I'm sorry. Ephesians 1, 3, verse 14. 3, I, I didn't think it was that long. <laughs> 3, 14. Praise God. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. What are we saying? The number one thing that we're going to talk about is redemption and we're going to have to bow our knee to Jesus Christ and we're going to build on this and I've got some really good stuff God's plan is to give uh, man the right to become his child to receive the nature of God. Uh, the Gospel of John 1. The Gospel of John 1. Twelve and thirteen. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believed on his name, which were born not of the blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God, and God is spirit. He's talking about spirit man. We know that. We are born of the spirit. So God has given us, and it came from God, the ability to be a son or a daughter of God. Now, you're going to see what I'm talking about, and we may not get that far tonight, but you're going to see what, what, what had to be done legally for us to live a holy life. And it, it came through Jesus, we know that. This could only be done after man legally had been redeemed from Satan's authority. Luke 4. Luke 4. Five through seven. And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that 
is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I, I will give it. If thou therefore worship me, all shall be thine. See, the devil didn't know what was going on. The devil didn't know that God had a legal plan whereby all these people throughout all the world that were under his authority, Satan was going to lose his authority by a legal maneuver of God. See, he thought he had outsmarted God. Which was ignorance, you know. We knew that. And this re uh, redemption is twofold. Um, Colossians 1. Colossians 1. Now when I say twofold, this was done in the past. What I'm about to, to get to now. This is a legal thing. Colossians 1 and 12. Giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us able to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Okay, that's what he did on back there. In the even before the foundation of the earth, he he already had this in mind. He knew this was going to happen. He knew it had to be. This is a legal move now against Satan. Now uh, we're going to talk about the present, the living side of of uh, this legal maneuver. Ephesians 1.13. Ephesians 1.13. Praise God. In whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the, the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Now, this was a promise God had made back before the foundation of the earth. He and Jesus talked all these things over, what was going to happen. God didn't one day say, oops, we need to make a plan, Jesus. You've got to really get this on the inside of you. That God is so awesome in His ways. He's got everything figured out before it happened. There's no oops in His life. Never has been. God knew what what all of us were going to do before the foundation of the earth. He just, he just that smart. He's that good. I like to convey this anytime I teach or preach. The awesomeness of God. I'd like for that to bear on, on people's minds and in their spirit just how awesome God is. See, and, and why would you want to do that? There's a reason for it. No matter how big your problem is, God's handled this problem thousands of times back there. It's not new to Him. See, there's no oops there on that one either. Hallelujah. 
And I wonder sometimes, you know, people, they have huge problems, mountains. If you think about it now, it talks about mountains in the Bible. But remember this one thing. God has no mountains. He has no mountains at all. Mountains are not a problem to him. See, the mountains that we have, they're our mountains. But what, what we've got to do is realize how great and awesome God is. And we start whittling away at that mountain. His word has got to be as awesome as he is. He said, I and my word are one. So if you're using this, this awesomeness of God that's written on these pages and you believe that you receive them when you prayed about them, then you realize them. They come to pass. Praise God. So now we've got up to living in the uh, uh, legality of God's uh, maneuver that he did against Satan. Uh, Satan has uh, no authority over the body of Christ. Has absolutely no authority over the... Now, there are times when we can open a door and let him eat our lunch, if you will. But then we need to get back in the Word, ask God to forgive us and, and cover that problem with the blood and then stay in the, the legalized Word of God that will keep Satan from coming any further in your life. You need to get that blood uh, washing this, this, this mountain that we've created. Legally, the, uh, the death of Jesus, the very moment that he arose from the dead, all this power that we're talking about was for the church at that very moment. And it never has changed. And the more we realize what we have in the Word and act on it, see, a lot of times uh, there's a place that says, uh, be a, a doer of a word, not a hearer only. Uh, so many times we have to get in the word and do that word to get over this mountain we've created. Second Corinthians five. Second Corinthians five. Second Corinthians five. Praise God. Five and seventeen. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. See, now, we're talking about God has made us new. Everything's new now with us who have um, asked Him to come be a, our Lord and Savior. Everything is new. We're under that, that new covenant that, that God Almighty cut with Lord Jesus. And at this time, the man is free. He's totally reconciled 
for the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, let's see. Uh, presently, the moment we made Jesus Lord, that freedom goes into effect. John 17. John 17. Fifteen through twenty-three. Seventeen, we're going to start at fifteen and go through twenty-three. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy word, thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe. On and through the word. That they all may be one. And thou, Father, are in me and I in thee that they also may be also in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, and that they may be made perfect in me and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and loved them as thou hast loved me. Now Jesus, if you, if you would take that entire section and really study what he said. He said a lot of things in that, that verse. First of all, he's, he's asking, he's telling God that he knows he loves him and he knows he loves us as much as he loves him. And, and that you know, that's kind of mind-boggling in a sense. God loves us just as much as he loves Jesus. He'll, he'll not make any difference between us, children of God, as he does with Jesus. There's lots of things that you can uh, read out of these verses. And we won't get into those tonight. Hallelujah. Uh, let's do Romans 8, 2. Romans 8, 2. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made us free from the law of sin and death. See, we're not under the the law of sin and death anymore. Let's do uh, Romans 6. Romans 
Romans 6, and we're going to start at 8. Now, if we, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin and alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. See, now this was the legal maneuver that God put on Satan. If Jesus died, then we're to die. But we die in Him. So that sin has no more authority over us. Jesus took the authority of Satan totally out of the, the way. Praise God. We are redeemed from spiritual death. We're redeemed from sickness, disease, and poverty. Galatians 3. Galatians 3. Praise God. Galatians 3.13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. And also, and, and we need to read this, that the blessing of Abraham might come on, and I always say me. It says Gentiles, but I always say me. Through Jesus Christ, it's more personal. I'm not changing the, the, the scripture. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. What's he saying? We've been redeemed from the law. We've been redeemed unto Christ. We're a seed of Abraham. And all the promises of, of God that was made to Abraham, we're heir to those promises. See, that's a biggie. Because God gave him a, an awesome covenant. And see, we have one even better than that. But Abraham was very rich. See, and a lot of times we don't think about this. We, you know what I'm saying? We, we think a lot about uh, our spiritual wellness and all, but we, a lot of times we just don't think about it. We're heir to his wealth through Christ Jesus. For if you be in Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs, heirs, heirs to what? The promises. God made him very rich. And you know, rich doesn't always mean money. Think about it now. I'll give you a good example. You're rich in your family. You know what I'm saying? You, God has allowed you to have an awesome family around you. So you're rich in that, that area. Um, <laughs> there's great wealth in knowing that the Word of God will heal you. See, if you keep picking at God's Word in this manner, you'll find out you're an extremely rich person.
But those that are outside of Christ, they're going to live eternity in damnation. What, what, what have they received? Nothing. But on the other hand, those who accept Christ Jesus will live in an awesome place with God forevermore. I'm talking about forever. And that's, that's kind of hard to comprehend itself. Ever and ever and ever. Walk on streets made out of gold. Doors made out of pearls. So, where's your abode going to be? It's going to be in heaven. Your house is not going to ever need painting. Wouldn't that be wonderful? <laughs> you won't have to fix the doors or the hinges or anything like that. See, all these things will be maintained by the Word of God. Whatever God created, He maintains them with a the Word. You know, we've heard uh, people tell about going to heaven and come back. And they got to see some things that happened in heaven. And, and one of the things that's uh, really neat to hear about is when you step on a plant, and if you turn on that plant, you look down and you never harmed it. Because it's life. You, you stepped on something God has spoken life into. And there's many other things like that that would tell you about the awesomeness of God. And we're going to get to live in this, in this awesomeness, throughout eternity. So that's one of the benefits. You know, we talk about benefits, inheritances. Well, an inheritance is a benefit. So one of the benefits we're going to have is, is be close to God. Hallelujah. We're going to live where He lives. Praise God forevermore. Let's go to uh, Revelation 5. Revelation 5. Praise God. 5, 9, and 10. And they sang a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seal thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood. Out of every kindred and every tongue and every people and every nation hast made us unto God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. See, we're going to have a job. Throughout all of eternity, we're going to have a job doing what God would have us to do. I don't think He's just going a thousand year fishing trip. I think this thing's going to be in place where we have to do certain things for God. There's, There's going to be an earth here. And those people are going to need help. Teach them how awesome God is. See, God's got an awesome plan. And I like using that word. Praise God. Praise God. Wow. Wow. I kind of like to unhook right about here. Um, because I'm, I'm going to get into a different aspect.
our aim is to show that through the Word of God, through the power of the Spirit, we can live a holy life. Now, I understand this with every fiber of my being. We've got an adversary. And you're going to have to be mindful that this adversary does not like you at all. So what do you do? You do the exact same thing Jesus did. It is written. It will always come out of the Word. It is written. Your holiness is going to come out of the Word. Your sanctification is going to come out of the Word. The Word will cleanse you. By the washing of the word, do you remember? <laughs> and it's just an awesome thing, the way God works things. Who would ever thought, you know, when you were born and you were growing up and uh, you knew, you were taught from time you could remember anything about God, but it took you years to ever understand you know, as you're growing up, what an awesome person he was. And I'm going to say this. The longer you live and the more you concentrate on that, the more you're going to find out how awesome he is. I say this all the time. I live, move, and have my being in the midst of awesome. Even the awesomeness of God's fire. Why? Why would you say that? Man, sling that door wide open for God to be able to do whatever He wants to do in your life. It don't matter what He wants to do in your life, it's going to be good. So we'll take this word and we'll take it up again the next time I'm invited to teach and and we'll go a little further on it. Uh, I think it can get into a series <laughs> because no further than I went tonight. And it looks like it'll go that way. So guys, I hope you learned something and, and something you can take with you and, and share. See, your life is always going to be, always, when you're in Christ Jesus, always going to be to share. That's who you are. If a pastor, for instance, he, as he teaches you things and as you grow, then you share those with people. You'd be surprised at what's out there. See, you need to know what's right. You wouldn't believe how many times I have people tell me, well, I just believe this. I say, well, where do you believe it from? You've got to have a basis. That's not Bible. You see where I'm coming from? They need to know Bible. Because the Word of God is the one thing that's going to put them over in any problem they're facing. Doesn't make any difference what it is. It's got to be word. Hallelujah. God's word and he are one. The Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, they're one. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you guys for listening this afternoon. Thank you for We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the 
giving online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.